Ragnarok is hitting theaters, and in my humble fanboyish opinion, it looks pretty good. It's of course based on the Marvel Comics character, who in turn was based on the figure from Norse mythology, but curiously, Norse myth describes Thor as wild-eyed, red-haired, and full-bearded. So it's interesting how they decided to make him a smiling, clean-shaven blonde man. And what's up with that, Fox Features? She'll let Thor help. First appearing in Weird Comics number one, Fox's Thor bears more than a superficial resemblance to Marvel's Thor, who would premiere two decades later. Adventurer Grant Farrell is chosen by the god Thor himself to wield his mighty hammer, assuming the identity and power of Thor. His is the power to fling the hammer with tremendous force, use it to fly through the sky and summon lightning. It's all very familiar, but presumably just a bit ahead of its time, as Thor only ran five issues in Weird Comics before being replaced by the unrelated Dynamite Thor. In 1959, Charlton also gave us a version of Thor drawn by the legendary Steve Ditko, a sickly Scandinavian man who acquired great power from a hammer-shaped object he found. Not actually a god, Charlton's Thor was instead just a man who created the legends of the Norse gods. Prior to that, a character named Thor, a Viking companion to time-traveling Scott Rand, appeared in MLJ comics, but he had next to no ties to the mythological figure. A person who did, though, was Hurricane, the son of Thor. I think it's time I join the fun. I do hope Pluto won't find my brand of humor too distasteful. Mixing mythologies with little regard to accuracy or consistency, Hurricane was a god come to Earth, the son of the thunder god Thor, allegedly in this tale the last of the Greek immortals, who battled Pluto, who is somewhat conflated with the Christian devil. Hurricane is extremely fast, thanks to the wings on his feet, very much resembling those of Roman god Mercury. And why not? The first Hurricane story was, in fact, a redrawn second story for Mercury, a superheroic version of the Roman god who appeared only once in Marvel's Red Raven Comics number one. Both Mercury and Hurricane were revealed in more modern times to be aliases of the Eternal Macari, but let's put a pin on that for now. Thor obviously wasn't the only god to walk among mortals and fight crime or to influence others who did. I'd wager the mythological figure who got around most was Hercules, in more ways than one, eh, Marvel's Hercules? Eh? Eh? Get around? You know? Eh? Say no more? Your modern weapons are toys to me. They do not hurt me. Lois Lane turned me down for this modern hero they call Superman. But I'll crush him with my magic powers the ancient gods gave me. America needs a champion, a savior to clean out the human vermin who plot to overthrow liberty. With the help of the gods and my strong arm, this fight will go no further. Hercules really was the go-to mythological figure, not just for comics, but for movies and other entertainment. He was the H in Shazam, he was called upon by Kid Eternity, and, and he was even the first film role for Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, after the Golden Age, and even past the Silver Age, both Marvel and DC had Hercules titles. But I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Thor and Hercules were always the most popular, but it wasn't unusual to have gods walking the earth in the Golden Age. A long-running backup feature in Yellow Jacket comics was Diana the Huntress, in which the goddess of the hunt helped the Allies conquer the Nazis, along with some other Olympians who valued freedom way more than classic mythology would suggest. Centaur Comics' Craig Carter was able to summon any figure from Greek mythology, from Pegasus to Zeus himself because of a magic ring he found in Egypt. Look, nobody in the Golden Age understood how mythology worked, but damn if they didn't milk it for story value. But even through all that, the character who really defined the gods among us standard for comics, until Thor came along, was Venus. Who am I? Why, Venus, of course. Marvel's Venus was a latecomer to the Golden Age, not introduced until 1948 in the comic that bore her name. Bored living on the planet Venus, she traveled to Earth, where she was groomed to become a model by magazine editor Whitney Hammond. A combination of superhero, romance, and career girl comics, Venus's title featured guest appearances by many Greek and Roman gods, as well as versions of Thor and Loki that predate Marvel's more famous representations. But soon, 1962 came along and the face of comic book mythology was set. The hammer Mjolnir was found by crippled physician Don Blake in Journey into Mystery number 83, and the legend of Marvel's Thor was born. Blake soon learned he wasn't merely holding the powers of Thor, but was, in fact, Thor himself, given the form of a frail human to teach him humility. 
And this is where I'd wrap up, but I really do injustice to this topic without cruising into the Bronze Age. Firstly and foremost was Jack Kirby's New Gods. Not directly based on a particular mythology, the New Gods featured an entirely new mythos of Jack Kirby's glorious weirdness, introducing, among others, DC's most dangerous villain, Darkseid. And not to be outdone by himself, Kirby went on to recreate the Greek gods over at Marvel with the Eternals, an immortal race of men whose powers helped shape the myths of the ancient world. A curious choice, since Marvel's universe already included the very mythical figures the Eternals were meant to emulate. Kirby likely didn't originally intend the Eternals to coexist with Marvel's superheroic universe, but they've since been used to explain discrepancies and contradictions in mythological tales as they apply to Marvel's versions of the stories, and even explain odd behaviors of mythical figures in the Golden Age stories, such as Thor's so-called son Hurricane, in recent years revealed to be the superfast Eternal Makari. And I might as well mention Isis, because Egyptian mythology is cool too. Based on the Saturday morning TV series, DC published eight issues of the adventures of schoolteacher Andrea Thomas, whose mystic amulet allows her to transform into the goddess Isis and fight evil. Some people call superheroes the modern mythology, and whether you agree with that or not, there's no doubt that mythology shaped the superhero. Superman is effectively a modern telling of Hercules, who in turn was a Hellenic Age telling of Gilgamesh, and such tales probably go back to before there were means of writing stories down. So whether it's adventurous Grant Farrell or crippled Don Blake, a frail Viking or Jane Foster, the power of Thor has long thundered through comic book history, and like Mjolnir, it will always return. And that is Thor's Golden Age influence. Fella calls himself Atlas, Captain, and he sure lives up to his name. I wish we had more like him around here. <laughs>